दोस्तों अब हम आपके सामने बुलाते हैं साथी उदय कुमार को उदय कुमार हमारे साथ तारापुर जैतापुर यात्रा में थे वो भी गजब की यात्रा थी मेरे ख्याल से हम लोग दो बस भर के थे बस बनवारी लाल शर्मा जी थे जस्टिस सावंत और कुलशे पाटिल जी थे भाई ने यात्रा का उद्घाटन किया था बस दो बस भर के लोग और न जाने कितनी बस भर के पुलिस मतलब इतने सब वैशाली ने रखा ही ना जस्टिस सावंत उनके लिए क्या खतरा है भाई कि अंदर चले जाएंगे तो रोक देंगे एडमिरल रामदास थे वो नहीं आ पाए क्योंकि उनकी पत्नी की तबीयत काफी खराब है वो थे एडमिरल विष्णु भागवत थे ये सारे लोगों को पुलिस घेर कर आगे ही नहीं बढ़ने दे रही थी और हमको जबरदस्ती थाने में ले गए वहां पे वो उनका जो थाने का इंचार्ज था वो सल्यूट मारता घूम रहा था सारे एडमिरल्स को और माफी मांग रहा था कि मैं करूं क्या लेकिन उन बेशर्मों ने हमारे दोनों बस ड्राइवरों को डरा धमका कर भगा दिया फिर भी यात्रा जारी रही मतलब कल्पना कर सकते हैं कि यदि वो इतना डर रहे हैं बुद्धिजीवियों से इंटेलेक्चुअल से नौजवानों से जो रैशनल बातें कह रहे हैं दो बार मेरी जानकारी में उनको ओपन पब्लिक डिबेट में हराया गया है एक बार मेघालय में एक बार बेंगलोर में इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस में बकायदा डिबेट हुआ और वो नाक की बुरी तरह से खाए ये सारे काकोड़कर एंड कंपनी अब तो ऐसा है काकोड़कर की सवाल का जवाब ही नहीं देते उनके पब्लिक लेक्चर में ये शर्त होती है कि आप सवाल नहीं पूछ सकते ऐसे ऐसे पब्लिक स्पीकर ऐसे ऐसे वैज्ञानिक इसीलिए इस पब्लिक मीटिंग में ये सारे लोगों को बुलाए क्योंकि हम जब कॉलेजों में लेक्चर देने जाते हैं तो लोग पूछते हैं आप कौन है आप कौन से अणु वैज्ञानिक है आपकी बात क्यों माने काकोड़कर और ये सारे लोग तो बोल रहे हैं कि अणु ऊर्जा सेफ है तो हुआ कि चलिए देश भर से लोग आए हैं उनका आपसे भी मुखातिब हो और वो भी अपनी बातें रखें ताकि आपके दिमाग में सवाल पैदा हो कि भाई इतने सारे लोग बोल रहे हैं और हम लोग कम नहीं है ना ये तो सब एक एक आंदोलन के नेता हैं तो कुडम कुलम लड़ाई ऐतिहासिक लड़ाई दसियों हजार मछीमार शांतिपूर्ण तरीके से वहां पर धरना देकर बैठे हुए हैं और एक दो दिन नहीं डेढ़ साल वो धरना चला पूरे इलाके भर के मछीमार रोज पहुंच रहे थे ये कहने के लिए कि प्लांट नहीं चाहिए पुलिस ने उन लोगों पर सैकड़ों सैकड़ों नहीं मैं आई थिंक इन थाउजेंड ना हाउ मेनी केसेस सम छप्पन हजार केस लगा रखे अंग्रेजों ने भी इतने नहीं लगाए थे इसीलिए हमारे साथी बोलते हैं गोरे अंग्रेज गए तो काले आ गए वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड है कि एक थाने में इतने केस दर्ज हो इतने थोड़े से लोगों की सेडिशन का केस लगा रखा है कि देशद्रोही हैं हम उनसे पूछते हैं कि अरे भाई हम तो देशी लोग हैं एरिवा देशभक्त हो गया रूस का वो क्या नाम है रोसा टाउन देशभक्त हो गया और हम देशद्रोही हो गए अपने ही देश के लोग जो सवाल उठा रहे हैं ये इन पर आरोप लगाते हैं कि तुमने फॉरेन फंडिंग ली है और खुद उनकी पूरी आरएसएस विदेशी फंडिंग पर चलती है रोज फ्रंट लाइन में लेक के लेक आए हुए कि कितनी फंडिंग बाहर से आती पूरा देश विदेशी पैसों पर चल रहा है एफडीआई तभी तो चाहिए तो जो लोग देश को बेच रहे हैं वो तो देश भक्त हो गए 
और जो देश के लोगों के लिए अपने लिए नहीं बंगाल के साथ ही हरिपुर का प्लांट बंद कर चुके हैं बंद करवा चुके हैं लेकिन फिर भी यहां पर आते हैं क्योंकि वो जानते हैं कि जैतापुर में एक्सीडेंट होगा या कुडम कुलम में एक्सीडेंट होगा तो बंगाल भी प्रभावित होगा क्योंकि देश की अर्थव्यवस्था खत्म हो जाएगी यह गौरबचौ बोलता है कि यूएसएसआर इसलिए खत्म नहीं हुआ कि वो रूस से हार अमरीका से हार गया यूएसएसआर इसलिए खत्म हुआ और टूट गया क्योंकि चरणोबल एक्सीडेंट इतना भयानक था कि उसके जो आर्थिक कॉस्ट थे उसने पूरे रूस को खत्म कर दिया यूएसएसआर को खत्म कर दिया और यूएसएसआर ब्रोक अप गौरबचो का नेट पे जाकर सर्च कर सकते हैं गौरबचो प्रेसिडेंट था जिसने की फॉर्मल डिजोल्यूशन शुरू किया यूएसएसआर का इतना भयानक होता है न्यूक्लियर एक्सीडेंट तो उस प्रकल्प के बारे में कुडम कुलम प्रकल्प के बारे में जिन्होंने ऐतिहासिक लड़ाई लड़ी है वो आपके सामने विस्तार से इस विषय पर अपनी बात रखेंगे कि क्यों अणु ऊर्जा गलत है अभी तो आपने आंदोलन के साथियों की बात सुनी कि वो कैसे लड़ रहे हैं अब उसके थोड़े साइंस पर जाए जाए कि अणु ऊर्जा आई एम सेइंग की लॉर्ड ऑफ एक्टिविस्ट है स्पोकन ऑन हाउ दे आर फाइटिंग न्यूक्लियर एनर्जी वी इन्वाइट यू टू स्पीक ऑन वॉट इज रॉन्ग विथ न्यूक्लियर एनर्जी वाई आर वी अपोजिंग इट तो एक जोरदार तालियों के साथ उदय कुमार जी इन्वाइटेड स्पीकिंग इंग्लिश वो अंग्रेजी में बोलेंगे ट्रांसलेशन साइमल्टेनियस स्क्रीन पर होता रहेगा आप में से जो अंग्रेजी नहीं समझ पाते कृपया स्क्रीन पर ध्यान दीजिए आपको साइमल्टेनियस ट्रांसलेशन स्क्रीन पे मिल जाएगा रेस्पेक्टेड लीडर्स ऑन द डायस माय डियर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार आई एम सॉरी आई कॉन्ट स्पीक इधर इन मराठी और हिंदी and i have to speak in english i have been asked to speak why we don't need nuclear power mind you we are not saying why we don't need electricity we are not saying why we don't need development we are for electricity we are for development but the questions are whose development are we talking about and what kind of development are we interested in whose development adanis and ambanis and tatas and birlas development or the development of the ordinary citizens of this country one statistic says that almost 70% of the people in this country scrape along with less than 20 rupees a day can you imagine what can we do with 20 rupees a day 20 rupees you can't have a cup of tea and a snack for 20 rupees 70% of this country scrapes along with less than 20 rupees a day we are concerned about their development not adani and ambani's development last year in 2014 november our prime minister narendra modi took a delegation to australia my friends and i were embarking on a national train yatra we were going from kanyakumari to kashmir distributing handbills in all different indian languages to our people in the various railway stations trying to create a discussion a debate on nuclear power the hindu newspaper carried a front page news the hindu is not a very pro uh, i mean uh, people newspaper it's a very pro nuclear newspaper but we were very surprised to see a story in the front page of that newspaper saying that the power minister mr piyush goel criticized the nuclear power saying that it was expensive and it was an outdated technology dumped on india by foreign countries we were so excited to read that news because it is a bjp minister it is a central minister 
It is a power minister who makes this statement. We were really thrilled that a cabinet minister is talking about the cost of nuclear power and the unviability of nuclear power. Prime Minister Narendra Modi took a delegation to Australia and you know who was among the delegation? Adani. Why was Adani accompanying Prime Minister to Australia? He was trying to buy a coal mine in Australia. For how much? 6,000 crores of rupees. Where did that money come from? From a loan. Who was giving the loan? State Bank of India. With whose money is that bank operated? With you and my money. 6,000 crores loan to Adani. Can you and I get 100,000 rupees loan from the State Bank of India without any guarantees, warranties and all kinds of... Uh, Yes, signatories and you know all kinds of paraphernalia. 6,000 crores of rupees loan was being given to Adani to buy a coal mine in Australia. When Adani buys a coal mine in Australia, on whose head will he dump that coal? And you and me. He has to dump all that coal on our head. So, the BJP government had the power minister make a statement about the unviability of nuclear power. They had to go slow on nuclear power so that Adani could sell all that coal to us at a higher price, at an inflated price. It all came to public only after a week. Now, this shows the duplicity of these governments. This shows the insincerity of all these prime ministers. Manmohan Singh was a disaster. Manmohan Singh didn't do anything except planning to sell the country to foreigners. Even he was not good even at that. He recently admitted that Narendra Modi is a better salesman than he himself was. Yes, it was a misstatement. He himself made it. When Dr. Narendra Modi was the Prime Minister, he made a state in, statement in the Parliament. 40% of our children in India are born malnourished. What a shame. After almost 70 years of independence, our Prime Minister goes to the Parliament and admits that 40% of our children are being born malnourished and underweight. Why are our children born malnourished and underweight? Because their mothers are not getting enough nutrition. Why aren't the mothers getting enough nutrition? Because they live in abject poverty. They don't get safe drinking water. They don't get two square meals a day. They don't have a decent housing. They don't have sanitation. I was traveling by train from Nagarkoil to Pune for the past two days. You could see in the mornings men and women standing by the railroads with a bottle of water trying to defecate. Now this superpower called India hasn't made provisions for our people to defecate with dignity. We don't have sanitation facilities for most of our people. And here are Narendra Modi and Manmohan Singh and their like trying to sell the country to foreigners for a pittance. Dr. Manmohan Singh signed all kinds of deals, nuclear deals with the United States. It's almost 10 years now. Have they managed to anything at all? Imagine the amount of Time, energy, money, and the political energy they have spent on this God-forsaken India-US nuclear deal. Has it mattered a bit for us? Have we gained a little bit? No. Nothing at all. Have the Americans gained? Yes, so much. Because we are buying all kinds of military paraphernalia from them. Nuclear deal is strongly associated with our nuclear procurement. 
with our military procurement. Americans are very clever. When they do something, they always calculate how much they gain, how quickly they gain. But here we are, we have these leaders running around. Dr. Manmohan Singh, Singh spent 647 crores of rupees on his foreign tours during his 10 years of rule. 647 crores of rupees on his foreign tours. Narendra Modi will spend even more than that just one year. It makes news when Prime Minister comes back to India. Prime Minister is in India all of a sudden. And what does this Prime Minister do? The same thing what the previous Prime Minister did. What did the previous Prime Minister did? Signing agreements. Wherever they go, they sign nuclear agreement. Fortunately, they haven't been to Somalia and Ethiopia. <laughs> they will sign nuclear deal with them also. But what do these agreements mean anything for the ordinary people of India? We are still living in abject poverty. We haven't moved an inch. We are not saying we are against development. We need development. We need electricity. We need energy. But who's development? They are working for Adanis and Ambani's and for multinational corporations. They dictate terms and these guys obligingly follow their terms. Arun Jaitley, P. Chidambaram, Kapil Sibal and all these high profile lawyers in Delhi are working for multinational corporations, not for our people. What kind of development are we talking about? They hold United States as a model for development. The Western model development will not work for us. We are different people. We have a different culture. We have been living in harmony with nature. When we get a cardboard box, we don't throw it away like an American does. We think of 10 different possible uses for that cardboard box. When we don't use electricity in a particular room, we automatically, autom automatically go and switch it off. As we know how to conserve, we know how to reuse, we know how to recycle. This is part and parcel of our culture. We can't be made Europeans. We can't be made Americans when we shouldn't be. But in a country like this, instead of building on our strengths, instead of building on our positive things, these so-called leaders are trying to build on the negative things. We are, they are trying desperately to turn us all into Americans, into the British, into Europeans. That is a wrong model. That is why we are saying our development has to take, and take care of our fishermen, our fisher folk, our farmers, our traders, our workers, our women, the oppressed sections of our society who have been lagging behind for past 70 years. In this country, we haven't even provided opportunities for these people. Even today, we are discriminating against people in terms of caste in terms of skin color, in terms of religion. We need to go beyond all these things. We need to bring about basic human dignity for us. That is the development that we are talking about. But Narendra Modi and Manmohan Singh and Sonia Gandhi and all these types are talking about a totally different model of development. Nuclear power symbolizes that kind of development. Nuclear power is a wasteful American way of life. Nuclear power symbolizes wasteful Western way of life. We resist that. We are not saying no to electricity. Please remember. This is the accusation they often come up with. We are Luddites. We are backward people. We are trying to take the country back. No. We are surging forward. We want a better country for these people, these youngsters who are staying here. We want a country with social justice. We want a country with dignity for all human beings, men and women, and all the people of country. We want a better country. We want a better and beautiful India for all of us. But that beautiful India, that better India, 
will be actually truthfully beautiful for all of us, not just for a few of us who are in Delhi and Mumbai and other big metropolitan cities. We say no to nuclear power with solid scientific reasons. When they came up with nuclear power in the West, they said that it will be too cheap to meter. Nuclear power will be so cheap that we don't have to fix meters in your homes. That's what they said. Too cheap to meter. But now, what is the reality? It is too costly to matter. You can't afford it. It's not cheap. It is so expensive. There are so many hidden costs. They only talk about the construction cost of a nuclear power plant. They don't talk about all the things that happened before land acquisition. Contracts. Corruption involved. Wastefulness. The money they spend on PR work. The money they spend on bribing the politicians, Karunaniti, Jayalalitha, Lalu Yadav, Mulayam Yadav, Maya Vidhi, and all these <laughs> bribing them to make them fall in line. So much money is being spent on all these things. Nobody talks about it. Nothing is accounted for. All right. A nuclear power plant is built. What happens afterwards? The power plant produces power for 40 to 50 years. And then what happens? Can you put a lock on it and walk away? No. You have to decommission the godforsaken plant. Decommission. How do you decommission? You put tons and tons of concrete on the plant and bury it for several hundred years. Decommissioning the plant will be much costlier than the actual construction part. The global statistics says that. The waste management, the waste that you produce in this nuclear power plant in the 40 to 60 years of its lifespan has to be managed forever. What are you going to do with the waste? Abdul Kalam is not going to sit there and eat it. We have to take care of it. We have to manage it. We have to put it somewhere safe. Where are we going to put it? Is there a deep geological repository anywhere in the country? No. What are we going to do with that? Are we going to keep it in the bottom basement of the parliament? <laughs> All these things cost money. So how on the earth can you say that nuclear power is cheap? Nuclear power is the most expensive, but it is being heavily subsidized by the state and the central governments, mostly central government. Just because it is being subsidized so heavily, they are able to withstand all these cost fluctuations. Nuclear power is safe, they say. <laughs> Nuclear power is safe. We see the safety in Chernobyl. In Fukushima, in Three Mile Island, how safe it is. There are series of accidents happening in the Indian nuclear power plants. People keep talking, writing about it. Every single nuclear power plant in this country has had its history of incidents to accidents. The Department of Atomic Energy hide these things very skillfully. They don't reveal this information to the public. They control the media so effectively. So we don't really come to know about all these things. Because they are the only source of information for us. Nuclear power is clean, they say. How clean is it? What do we do with all that waste? We are talking about three different types of waste. Low-level waste, mid-level waste, medium-level waste, and high-level waste. Low-level waste is usually dumped into the sea. That's an acknowledged fact. Both liquid waste and the low-level waste are being dumped into the sea across the country. Medium-level waste and high-level waste have to be stored safely for hundreds of years. 
What do we do? In most locations, we keep the spent fuel, the fuel that has been burned, that has been spent in the same locations because we don't have a deep geological repository or a final place where we can keep all these waste safe. In the United States, they have Yucca Mountains and people there are up in arms against that storage site and the American government is struggling to find an alternative place. I have been to the Asse Mountain in Germany where the German nuclear power plant waste have been stored. We went deep down into that uh, uh, mountain uh, caves, some 300 meters deep. And they were also agonized at how they could deal with that seepage of salt water into the storage. What will happen? Pressure was mounting. They were afraid that some of these highly dangerous waste could explode any time. So they were trying, thinking of ways to remove this waste from that assay salt mountain to alternative sites. This is happening in Germany. Germany is a much more advanced country than we are. We all know that scientifically, technologically, they are much more advanced. If the Germans don't have an answer about this issue, I don't know how we are going to deal with this issue. We met with the Prime Minister Manmohan Singh in 2011. That was the first time I ever met any Prime Minister in India. Uh, hopefully that would be the last. <laughs> we were all sitting in a room. A lot of MPs from uh, Tamil Nadu, MLAs and uh, ministers, um, high level uh, bureaucrats from Delhi, then scientific advisor to the Prime Minister and all these big shots. I stood up and spoke about our struggle for 20 minutes and Prime Minister was so rigid and so angry I could tell. I, I really thought that that man had no emotions at all. But that day I found out that after all Manmohan Singh could also feel angry and some emotions. <laughs> that was a very reassuring thing. I spoke for 20 minutes and sat down. S.K. Jain, the chief of NPCIL, Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited, stood up and he asked the Prime Minister for permission to speak. Prime Minister nodded gently and uh, S.K. Jain said, Uday Kumar talked about waste. There will be some waste left. He held out his hand like this. Believe me, I am not exaggerating, I am not lying to you. He held out his hand like this. There will be some waste left which can be melted into glass. He said that the top officer of the Nuclear Power Corporation of India, uh, one of the top most scientists in the country, there will be some waste left that will be melted into glass and you can keep it in the showcases of your drawing rooms. I turned around and to see if there are any foreigners in the room. <laughs> Thankfully, there was no foreigner. I felt, oh, Otherwise, they would laugh at us. They would make fun of us. This bunch of Indian idiots are talking about this nuclear waste in such a childish manner. I was really tempted to say something, but uh, uh, to show difference to the Prime Minister and all those big shots in the room, I snubbed myself. I took a firm control over myself and kept quiet. This is the science that we have in this country. Nuclear power is not clean. Nuclear power is the answer for global warming, they say. Prime Minister Narendra Modi speaks about it all wherever he goes. We need to cut carbon emission. Yes, we need to. We need to save our air. Yes, we need to. Yes, polluted air is a problem. I agree. Totally. 100%. Polluted air is a problem. But poisoned air cannot be the answer. Poisoned earth cannot be the answer. You are going to bury this nuclear waste which will last long for 48,000 years. 48,000 years. The half-life is 24,000 years. 24,000, my friends. I'm asking all of you in this room, how many of us know the names of our great-grandmothers and great-grandfathers? I don't know. 
If we don't know the names of our great grandfathers and great grandmothers, think of the generations that we have to take care of 48,000 years. Who on the earth is going to protect this dangerous waste for that long? The half life is 24,000 years. We are going to poison the earth. Polluted air is a problem. Remedy should not be, the medicine should not be, the remedy should not be worse than the melody. We are suffering from a melody, global warming. Yes, carbon dioxide emission. Yes, it's a melody. But the remedy should not be worse than the melody. Treatment should not be worse than the disease. Nuclear power cannot be the answer for global warming. Now, think of the construction of a nuclear power plant. Can you imagine the amount of cement, steel, oil, electricity that go into the construction? They construct the damn thing for ever and ever. <laughs> Kudanglo nuclear power plant was built for 25 years. Kalpakam prototype fast breeder reactors are being built for 10 years now, 10, 15 years now. You can imagine the enormous amount of steel, oil, cement, electricity. Where do all they come from? Where do all they come from? From polluting sources. From polluting sources. They create all carbon emissions. So how on the earth can you say that a nuclear power plant is the answer for global warming? Nuclear power plants make global warming worse. We are going to spend a lot of time, concrete, cement and everything else after the nuclear power plant is decommissioned in the process of decommissioning, in waste management. We are going to spend a lot more energy on those things and we will contribute for global warming. This is a complete humbug to say that nuclear power is, ans is the answer for global warming. It is not. So, nuclear power is not clean. Nuclear power is not moral. Just because you and I will get electricity for 40 years, how on earth we can poison the natural resources of these young people? What moral legitimacy do we have? What moral legitimacy do we have to spoil the earth? The air and the water and the seas and the rivers of all these young people and their children just because you and I will get electricity for 40 years. Isn't it immoral? Isn't it illegitimate? Isn't it illegal? Yes, it is. Nuclear power is immoral. Nuclear power is not healthy. It creates a lot more problems. Somebody was saying, Justice Savant was saying this morning, even when there is no accident in a nuclear power plant, even when the nuclear power plants function normally, peacefully, beautifully, it will be contributing to our health concerns. We had just last Saturday, we had a state level convention in a place called Nayatangara in Kerala. We went to Kerala, met with all the political leaders in Kerala and we told them, look, if the expansion project takes place in, in Kudangulam, if we go ahead and set up six to ten nuclear power plants in Kudangulam, you know what will happen to the people of Kerala? They will be slow poisoned. Cesium, iodine, strontium, tellurium, and all different ionizing particles will be emitted from the smokestack of all the nuclear power plants 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days, 365 days of the year. People who are living in Kerala will be breathing this because the wind in the southern tip of the peninsula is always westerly. It has high moisture content because it is surrounded by the sea. We are surrounded by the sea. So, the moisture air will carry a lot of ionizing particles into Kerala through the westerly winds and people in Kerala will be breathing that day and out. The ocean current around India, in the Bay of Bengal, the water goes to Arabian Sea. Arabian Sea water comes to Bay of Bengal 
and the ocean currents will carry all this nuclear waste, liquid waste and the low level waste that is being dumped into the sea by the nuclear power plants. People in Kerala will lose their fish, fisheries. Their tourism, their economy. He told the people of Kerala, people of Kerala are intelligent, they understood all that. And that is why they don't want to have a nuclear power plant in their state. But politicians in our state are so inefficient and useless, so they dump all these nuclear power plants on us, my friends. There are two more things I need to highlight. One is disaster management. How good are we? I am a proud Indian and Indians are very good in many things. But we are not good at disaster management. One good example is Bhopal. 30 years. 30 years. What have we done? Have we helped those people? Have we paid any compensation for them? Have we offered any medical assistance? Nothing. How many prime ministers and chief ministers have come and gone? Have we managed to remove that waste that lies there for 30 long years? If we don't learn from that worst industrial disaster humanity has ever faced, how on the earth are we going to learn from all these things? How can you say that we are good at disaster management and we can deal with a nuclear power plant accident? In case of an accident, you know what they have to say? They have a liability act. That liability act has been twisted and tweaked and done all kinds of things just to accommodate the foreign interest. When Barack Obama, our master, our master was here in, uh, on January 26th on the Republic Day and uh, our Prime Minister came up with a list of FAQ, frequently asked questions of the Ministry of External Affairs. They diluted the whole damn thing and made it look like, look, you Americans don't are not held liable, will not be held liable for any kind of accidents or incidents or anything. You please sell your reactors. What will happen? In case of an accident, nothing will happen. Just like Warren Anderson left Bhopal in a special plane to his country and lived to the ripe age of 98, our nuclear reactor sellers will go back to their countries, whether it is France or Russia or United States. They will live their peaceful life there. But you and I will be suffering and suffering an agonizing death on the streets of Jaithapur, Kudangulam, Mithivirdi, Kovada, Haripur, everywhere else. This liability act has been completely diluted and made a joke. We need to take a stand on this. We need to tell our rulers that we are in charge, not Narendra Modi. We are not living in the garden of Narendra Modi or Manmohan Singh. We are living in our country, in our country. This is our country. This is our land. Not the land of Manmohan Singh, not the land of Sonia Gandhi, not the land of Narendra Modi. It's our land. We need to leave this country for our people, our children, our grandchildren. And that is why those of us who are here from all different parts of the country have gathered together in Pune to take a stand, to stand up, to stand up against this onslaught and to tell them that at least some people in this country are intelligent enough. We are watching, we are taking a stand and we will protect our country no matter what comes. We will protect our country. Thank you.